I want to talk to you for a minute about how Satan destroyed American preaching. If anybody's ever studied any kind of church history, you understand that uh, back during the Great Revival era, uh, sort of late 1700s on up through the 19th century into the early 1900s in America, uh, America was producing a lot of very powerful preachers. Uh, some of the greatest men of God that have ever walked this earth, uh, other than the first century, some of the greatest men ever were in the 18 or the 1800s and 19th century, in other words. And uh, something happened. All of a sudden, bars aren't being closed down. Sinners aren't being converted as they once were. The standards and the morality and everything else is not there anymore. What happened? Uh, let me show you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Satan had a master plan. And it's the same thing he's used since the beginning of time. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as, as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Did you know that you will have no power at all in preaching unless you believe from the book that you're preaching out of? You say, well, that sounds kind of basic. It's very basic. But you see... We have gotten so messed up in this country that now nearly all the preachers, if they've been to seminary at some Bible college or something like that, university, whatever, wherever they've gone, they are literally, they have been training these men now for over 100 years, since late 1800s, early 1900s, the devil came in and he brought in something called naturalistic textual criticism or higher textual criticism. He introduced a new Greek text which today, here's the latest edition of it, the 28th edition of the Nestle's text. And what happened is, the devil came in and said, this book, this King James Bible, is not God's perfect word. It's just a translation. Have you ever heard a preacher say that? It can't be perfect because it's just a translation. They seem to ignore the fact that in the original autographs there would have been translations. When Paul stands up and he's speaking to the people in Hebrew, in the book of Acts, and yet it's recorded in Greek. Kind of an interesting thing. But what you have is, these young men go off to these seminaries because they want to preach the Word of God. And what's being done to them is, they're being told that uh, actually the Greek does not support the King James Bible. Or in fact, any Bible. Let me get something here real quickly. I'll be right back. I just looked over here and I saw this. Doing some review of this right now. The English Standard Version, the darling of the modern evangelical. The Scriptures are our authority. And if the Scriptures don't say it, then we can't, you know, whatever. They come up with all kinds of nonsense. But... Uh, we find here in the preface to the ESV, to God's honor and praise. That's what it says here. We know that no Bible translation is perfect or final. Let me show you. Hopefully you can see that. The highlighted part there. To God's honor and praise, no Bible's perfect. Now, how does that make any sense? You say, well, no, no translation is perfect. You think, okay, then this isn't God's Word. If it's not perfect, then how can it be God's Word? You see, God's Word doesn't work effectually until you believe it. Let me show you another verse, Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. Why have the preachers in this country lost the power of God? Because they don't believe in the Scriptures. They are hypocrites. They stand in the pulpit and preach out of Bibles that they don't believe are perfect. 
they can go through that Bible. They'll call it God's Word and the Scriptures and things like this, but they can go through it and they can correct it and say, this is wrong, that's wrong, that's a bad translation. This is No translation is perfect or complete or final. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Where in the Bible is there anybody that has a PhD, or a THD, or a BA, or an MA, or any of these other things? Where's it at? Why are all those earned degrees out there? All these great preachers of today. PhD, THD, all this other stuff behind their name. Why? Oh, well, verse 7 there. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is just a translation. I can stand in the pulpit and con the suckers out there and tell them God's Word. God's Word is our standard. The Scriptures must be our final authority. And they don't believe it for one minute. And you think God is going to bless a bunch of lying devils like that? I don't think so. The power has left American preaching. There are no more great revivals or anything like that because people don't believe in the book anymore. And you know, it's so bad. People actually think that I'm a cult type of guy or whatever else, because I do believe the King James Bible is perfect. They classify me as a cult. Well, you're part of the uh, King James only cult thing. King James onlyism. Oh, what are you part of? No Bible is perfect? Standing there and saying that we have the Word of God, and you say, oh, you mean the book in your hand? Yes, this is the Word of God. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. <laughs> Wicked, vile, filthy, Liars is what these new version people are. First John chapter two. Yeah, you know, and these people are so they're so incredibly lost that a lot of them they'll say, You're using circular reasoning. You're using the Bible to prove the Bible. <laughs> okay, uh, what other source of truth is there? See, you go back to Genesis where the devil says to Eve, he says, ye can be as God's knowing good and evil. Okay? Yea, hath God said. He questions the scriptures. And then he says, ye can be as God's knowing good and evil. That's what these people are. The people that are into naturalistic textual criticism. And, and by the way, if I didn't define that before, let me just say what it is. Naturalistic textual criticism is a big fancy term that basically means they view this book as any other historical book. It's not supernatural in its origin. So they'll talk about, well, the translators, well, King James, well, I don't care about any of that stuff. Those things are there. They can defend the, the King James Bible and get into all of the arguments and everything else. But the fact of the matter is, God is the one that gave us this book. This is His book. It is supernatural in its origin. You say, I don't believe it. Then that's your problem. That's why you have no power. First John chapter 2 Verses 4 through 5. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. How do you know that you are in Jesus Christ? How do you know that you're truly saved if you don't believe in the King James Bible? Because I've never met somebody that says, oh, I don't believe the King James Bible is God's perfect word. But boy, I'll tell you what, the English Standard Version, the English Standard Version is God's book. Perfect, without error, does not need to be updated, does not need to be changed. The English Standard Version, by the way, is the Revised Standard Version. Just an updating of the Revised Standard Version that came out years and years ago, back in the 20th century. 
They just keep regurgitating these things. The American Standard Version comes out in 1901, and then in 1968, I believe it was, the New American Standard Version. And then in 1974, the NIV comes out, New Testament, and then the whole thing in 1978, and then they can do it again in the 1980s, and then again, and now the two, today's New International Version in 2001, and, and then, well, that's no good, so now we have the 2011 NIV. Interesting. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 43 through 47. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Every preacher that stands up in the pulpit and says no translation is inspired, we must search the scriptures, the scriptures are our final authority, but we don't hold the scriptures today, only the original autographs were perfect. Every single one of them, they are of their father, the devil. Every single one of them. Verse 45, And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Satan destroyed American preaching when he brought in the higher naturalistic textual criticism where people, he once he turned people and said, Yea, hath God said, this blessed book right here, this King James Bible, it's not really God's word. We found uh, older and better manuscripts. They come from the Vatican. Vaticanus. Okay? Or Vaticanus, however you want to say it. You educated morons out there. Oh, we found a better one. Codex B. You know. Oh, and then we found the Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus or however you want to say that. Educated morons. You know, Codex Aleph. Uh, we found these ancient manuscripts. Oh, they're so ancient. Oh, they're so wonderful and everything. And, and they've given us a much better system now. Yeah, they've given you infidelity and hypocrisy. A bunch of preachers, a bunch of Christians standing around saying, well, actually, the Greek word there could be it better translated and, and all this stuff. And the power of God just went whew, out of this nation. And America is already under the judgment of Almighty God. And the only reason, the only only reason that America still has any semblance of order and any prosperity at all is because of Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing Christians. And the devil wants desperately to silence those of us like myself. And the devil raises up people that use the King James Bible to make us look like fools. He does it all the time. If he can't replace, he'll try to infiltrate and try to make us look bad. That's what's going on. It's quite disgusting. But the power of God is still available to you today. This King James Bible is still just as good today as it was hundreds of years ago. You say, what about the updatings and, what, and the changes and things over the years? They updated some spelling changes and some font changes. I can show you here real quick. You'll give me just a minute. Here we go. <laughs> uh, this is a original uh, remake, not only a reprint, but a remake of what the King James Bible would have originally looked like. Um, see if I have my other one here. Okay, there it is. A little big. I'm going to be doing a, a uh, review of that thing soon. But here you have, this is a photographic copy of the original 1611. Okay, you can see the text there is different. It's a Gothic font. So they updated some of the words. And when you change from Gothic to Roman font, some of the spellings are a little bit different. The, the Gothic F, it looks like an S, but it, or excuse me, it looks like an F, but it's actually pronounced like an S. You know, well, they had to change that. They had to do some things, you know. 
but it's not like the changes that are happening in these new versions, like this thing, the ESV. I'm going to be coming out with a video in the future showing major, major doctrinal error in this perverted thing here. Why? Because the source is corrupt. This doesn't come from Christians. This comes from pagan Roman Catholics. This book here, this King James Bible, comes from Christians. This one here comes from the very hand of God. God gave this to the English-speaking world. And look at what this book has done. Look at the power that this book had when it was the only one being preached from the pulpits. But now that power is gone. Because you have a bunch of uh, preachers here in America and across the world too that stand up in the pulpit and preach out of books that they don't believe for one second. And if you don't believe that, the very simplest test of that is to go to your pastor, if you're still in one of these church buildings, go up to him and ask him. Ask him if he believes that the book that he holds in his hands, say, is that book God's word? And he'll probably say, well, yes, because that's how they're trained. They say, okay, is it perfect? I can nearly guarantee you, you're not going to find one that says, yeah, it's perfect. No errors in it. Most of them are going to say, I mean, you might find a very, very rare one that believes it's perfect. But most of them are going to say, no, it's just a translation. Well, if it's just a translation and it's not perfect, then how can it be God's word? You better think about that. 